Welcome to worship. Today is Mother's Day, and traditionally in church, uh, like here at COP, we would be celebrating all women in the churches. So ladies, I hope that today uh, is a day that you know that you are appreciated. May today be filled with laughter and joy. So let us worship our Lord.
For myself, becoming a mom initially was fairly smooth, but then we experienced secondary infertility, which means that we couldn't get pregnant or stay pregnant for the second time for many years. For many, infertility and miscarriages are secrets that we carry deep in our souls, afraid to tell others of our inability to get pregnant or carry a baby. For some, becoming a mom was easy, but now there are strained relationships and even total disconnection. And for others, they have lost their mom. And this day brings the grief and pain to the forefront once again. So as I said, this day can be challenging to celebrate. And so for all these reasons and more, I celebrate all women this day. Last week, we started a sermon series about a woman from scripture named Esther. So Esther was a young woman that lived in Susa. She won the beauty pageant and became the new queen. The previous queen had been dethroned for not showing off her beauty after a really long party. Esther keeps her Jewish identity to herself. Mordecai, Esther's father, <clears throat> excuse me, who became her father through adoption, revealed a plot to the king um, that this plot was going to kill the king. And so Mordecai essentially saved the king's life. He, too, is Jewish. Now, Haman, another character within this story, is the cunning villain. He rose to power in the kingdom, and the king made everyone bow down to him. Mordecai, remember that's Esther's dad, refused to do so. So Haman, with the king's approval, set out a decree that all Jews will be killed. We concluded it last week with acknowledging that although God is not mentioned in this whole book of Esther, that God, though, is indeed present, working quietly behind the scenes. So today we're going to be looking at chapters 4 and 5 of Esther. Now the Jewish people are fearful. This decree has just gone out from the king that all Jewish people are going to be killed. They're going to be annihilated. And so the city is in a complete uproar. Now, most of the Jewish people are hoping to somehow find a way to resist the annihilation. Mordecai, remember that's Esther's dad, responds to this death sentence by physically showing that he is in mourning. Mordecai tears his clothes, puts on a sackcloth and ashes, and then wails. These are expressions of extreme anguish and seeking God in the midst of grief. Esther is embarrassed by Mordecai as the way that he is walking around in a sackcloth with ashes on and, and wailing. So she tries to send him other clothes to put on, but he refuses. Esther then gets additional information from Mordecai through Hathach, her eunuch, who goes between the two. Esther is in her home uh, by the king, and Mordecai, of course, is outside of the king's walls. And so the eunuch, Hathach, goes between the two as a messenger. And so Mordecai gives Hathach a, a physical copy of the decree, and he takes that back to Esther. We also learn at the very beginning of chapter 4 that the reason Haman, Haman was able to convince the king uh, for this annihilation was by promising the king that he was going to pay lots of money to put into the king's treasuries. Mordecai then tells Esther that she needs to go to the king to beg for mercy and to plead for her people. And so that's where we pick up the scripture for today. Esther 4, 9 through 17. So Hathach returned to Esther with Mordecai's message. 
Then Esther told Hathesh to go back and relay this message to Mordecai. All the king's officials and even the people in the provinces know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court without being invited is doomed to die unless the king holds out his gold scepter. And the king has not called for me to come to him for 30 days. So Hathach gave Esther's message to Mordecai. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all the other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go and gather all of the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. So Mordecai went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Although God is present in this, Esther was not God's puppet. She had free will, just like we do today. She had a choice. She could ignore the plea from her people and her father. She could keep her identity a secret for as long as she possibly could and be safe in the king's palace and then do nothing. Or she could approach the king with a very real possibility of being killed, reveal her identity, and try to save her people. The choice was hers and hers alone. That is the beauty and the curse of free will. Mordecai's speech in verse 13 and 14 not only spoke to Esther, but can and does speak to us today. Verse 14, um, I'm going to paraphrase this, uh, where it says, If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for those that are being persecuted may come from somewhere else, but God is calling you. Who knows if perhaps you were brought to this time and this place for such a time as this. We like to be comfortable and perhaps not take risks. Yet, here we are being challenged in the scripture to take a stand for what we believe to be right and true and to help those in our community, even if it means putting us at risk. John Wesley, in his comments about Esther, says this. He says, We should, every one of us, consider for what end God has put us in the place where we are. And when an opportunity comes to serve God and our generation, we must take care not to let it slip. While I was working um, on my undergraduate degree at UW-River Falls, um, I worked part-time at the uh, United Methodist Church in Hudson, Wisconsin. The two pastors there at that time were Reverend Larry and Reverend Joan uh, Gable. Joan was my pastor when I was a child uh, at Ash Creek, and so I had this previous connection with her. And so while working there, I had already known Joan, but got to know her a little bit better. Um, but I also got to know her husband, Larry. I learned over lunch one day that while he was in college, he marched with Dr. King. This week, I reached out to him to get his story. He replied to me and, gave, and gives me permission to share this with you. Racism was running rampant in the 60s. Larry could not stay silent. He had to do something for such a time as this. And so he writes, I was a junior at North Central College in Naperville, Illinois. 
I was 21 years old and active in the civil rights movement. I had heard Dr. King in a college convocation, and he won my heart. A few years later, the march from Salem to Montgomery began. Now, I grew up in the inner city of Milwaukee on 7th and Clark Street. My home is part of I-43 now. I saw what racism was doing to the African-American friends that I had. My family moved to the north side of Milwaukee while my friends and families could not. I knew of an African-American man who was part of the Wisconsin News Channel 6 who made twice the money that my dad did, yet he could not find a home to buy outside of the hood. He was redlined. The injustice of racism and racial politics burned within me. If America was about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, why were so many denied it? It was just wrong. This did not set well with my family at all and still doesn't. The Selma to Montgomery March raised my concern of injustice to the national level seeing children protesting racial injustice pursued by water cannon trucks of the fire department did not set well with me. Watching peaceful protesters beaten by police and others stirred rage within me. Legally gathered protesters attacked by government entities revealed the systemic nature of racism in my country. The issue needed to be addressed, and it needed to be done now. For such a time as this, he knew that he needed to do something. He couldn't just sit idle waiting for someone else to go and help. And so he writes, this quote by Martin Niemöller, not sure if I'm saying that right, but let's go with it, uh, who is a German theologian and Lutheran pastor from uh, Germany during World War II Holocaust time, made me speak out about racism. And the quote goes like this. First, they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unions, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Larry could have been harmed, but even with that real fear, he knew he needed to do something, and he knew what he needed to do. So Larry goes on in his writing, he says, So I marched. I joined in the last leg of the march to Montgomery with Dr. King, walking peacefully on the highway and having whole families cursing and ranting racial slurs was so disturbing. Having a mother holding a child screaming hateful words shocked me to my core. Where was the church in responding to all this hatred? Why weren't preachers and white churches speaking out? For the most part, though, churches were silent. They blamed the agitating uh, polyesters, which I realize uh, means like the young folks, the college-age students, um, so they blamed the, the protesters, the young people, and rather than uh, taking ownership and understanding that so many were filled with racial hatred and malice. Where were the prophets like Amos and the others? God had given Larry a heart for all of humanity, had given him the courage to do what so many could not. For such a time as this, he risked everything to do the right thing. He concludes by saying that although he marched, the real heroes were those who began the march and the civil rights movement. Esther 4, 14b says, for such a time as this. Say that scripture to yourself, for such a time as this. What does that mean to you today, right now? 
What is God calling you to do for such a time as this? Maybe God is calling you to help others, to stand up for others, to be a voice for others for such a time as this. What is God calling you to do for such a time as this to show God's love to our neighbors? What is God calling you uh, to be brave about that you would rather keep silent, but you feel the nagging feeling that for such a time as this, you no longer can be still, you no longer can be quiet. When Iowa Grant School District closed its doors on Friday, March 13th, we thought we would at least be back for Monday and Tuesday the following week. But as you know, we were not. In that first week of not having school, many local pastors gathered together and we discussed the need for food to come to these children that were at home. There are so many families and so many children within the Iowa Grant School District that rely on the breakfast and the lunch each and every day for their nutrition. And so the LCIC, which is an organization in Livingston, as well as Pastor Greg at the Free Methodist Church in Livingston, really took the bull by the horns and organized a great program that's still going on right now. And it's a program for families within our school district. Each Wednesday, those families that are in need of food for the coming week can fill out a form, uh, submit it to Pastor Greg, and then on Thursday, volunteers come to pack those boxes, and the families that need that food then stop by Thursday afternoon to pick it up. For such a time as this, children were hungry. So the LCIC and Pastor Gray could not look the other way. So they did something to help our community. When the Wisconsin Humane Society told the public that they were going through hard times because of COVID-19. Within five days, all the dogs were adopted or taken into foster care. That means that for such a time as this, all 319 dogs are now sleeping on couches instead of crates. And so let's get back to Esther chapter 5 to conclude this sermon. Esther trusts that Mordecai is right and that God will indeed see her through for such a time as this. And so she chooses to approach the king without an invitation. She sees, uh, she sees him from away and so he sees her too and welcomes her into his quarters. He asks what she wants and she invites him and Haman remember uh, the villain in the story, to dinner. They agree to go, and at dinner, the king asks her what she wants. She then, at that dinner, invites them to come to dinner the next night, promising at that dinner she will tell him what she wants and what she needs. And so that night, after the, the dinner with the king and the queen, Haman goes home. And on his way home, he sees Mordecai, Esther's dad. And of course, Mordecai does not bow to Haman. Haman, of course, is angry, but he, he contains himself fairly well. At home, then, with his wife, he boasts about his status and his personal invitation to dinner again the following night with the king and the queen. But he also expresses his anger with Mordecai. And so Haman's wife, Zeresh, suggests a gallows of 50 cubits. Uh, so 50 cubits is about 75 feet. So that would be about a seven-story building. Uh, so she suggests that this gallows be built that night to have Mordecai hung on the next day so that Haman can go to dinner the following night in good spirits. Haman is thrilled with this idea. So he has those gallows of uh, 50 cubits tall made that night for such a time as this.
may you know that God's love is for you and that you can lean on God whenever you are in need. And so go, go for such a time as this into our world and into our communities, staying safe, of course, but knowing that you are not alone. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.